Climate change. Climate change. We've all been talking about it today. It's a term that we all keep hearing these days, don't we? But do we ever sit and ponder that climate change is harming the ecosystems our people and economies depend on? Pakistan is the eighth most vulnerable country to climate change. This, ladies and gentlemen, is not just an environmental issue anymore. This has a social dimension. It means that people will be impacted and economic losses are a given. For Pakistan, climate change is water change. Why so? Because floods and droughts are the two most anticipated extreme events of this phenomena. And we need to be prepared for both. Let's just contextualize Pakistan's current water situation. Today, Pakistan's per capita water availability is less than 1,000 cubic meters. This is well below 5,000 cubic meters, which was our number in early 1950s. The 1,000 cubic meters per person that we stand today at is well below the Falkenmark stress indicator, an indicator used by experts to assess the water situation. This puts Pakistan in the category of a water-stressed nation. Improper water management is at the heart of the water issues in Pakistan. Overall, there is no equitable distribution of water. For example, women in Thar have to travel more than three to four kilometers every day just to get access to water. Climate change is expected to increase this variability. Similarly, our deltas are dying due to sea level water rise, brackish water intrusion, and lack of fresh water coming from rivers and lakes. So now that we've taken a snapshot of Pakistan's water issue, I feel it is imperative that we talk about solutions. Solutions that are innovative, disruptive, out of the box, possible and viable. So in my work as a water conservationist, we try to capitalize on opportunities where we can save water and use it sensibly. We believe that as trustees of the environment, it is our responsibility to manage our natural resources in a sustainable manner. We look at water management in three broad categories, water stewardship, water conservation, and water security. So during various field surveys that we conducted, we observed that all ablution water from mosques goes to waste. We started exploring further and we identified that an individual on average consumes around five to seven liters of water per ablution. Pakistan is a Muslim country and we have mosques in every nook and corner. So there's a huge water saving potential there. We further observed that most mosques have a park in their vicinity. Thousands of liters of water is used for ablution in mosques across the country, and all this water can be reused for other purposes, horticulture being one of them. So in November 2019, we installed our first ablution water reuse system at a mosque in model town A Block, Lahore. Water from the ablution is rerouted towards a basic sand and gravel filter, and then it is stored in a tank. From there, the water is used in the park near the mosque. This system has saved around 340,000 liters of water in two years. This saves the extraction of water fresh water for drinkable purposes. Later on, we replicated the intervention and installed it at another nine mosques in Lahore and Multan. These systems combined have a water saving potential of 31.7 million liters per year. The park also looks aesthetically pleasing now because it is getting water on a daily basis. And remember, earlier, all this water was going to waste. Reusing ablution water for horticulture purposes, green belts in the city, toilet flushing, or even to wash the streets, it's a great opportunity to not extract fresh water for these purposes. 
We must identify that with the burgeoning population and increasing water demand, we need to invest in opportunities that help save water. This idea was appreciated by the Supreme Court of Pakistan and promulgated by the Judicial Commission for Water. And even though it seems like a very simple idea, we must all agree that simple solutions are usually the most effective ones. Starting small is the best strategy. A city-level adoption, whereby funds are diverted towards mosques through public-private partnerships or by governments, and then a country-level adoption will help ease the burden on the aquifer. Just, just think, ladies and gentlemen, for a moment, that if a single system can save around 300,000 liters of water in two years, imagine the water-saving potential this intervention has if implemented across the country. I'm going to leave you all at that point to ponder. Thank you very much.